we're going to start with the frog dissection, focusing on the dorsal and ventral sides of the frog. If you take a look at the dorsal side, which is the top or back area, you can see the patterns and colors. Here's the dorsal side, here's the lateral side, and here's the ventral side. So the ventral side is very light, more of a light green or yellow. So the dorsal is very dark, very green, dark green, and dark green to almost blackish spots. Now we're going to look at the hind legs, and the hind legs are the jumping legs, and these are very strong legs. Now there are five toes, and there's little nodules or little bumps on the bottom of the feet. And you can see those little nodules, those little bumps. And you can see the webbing between the toes. Now you can see the four leg. Think of four, think of front, F for four, F for front. So the four leg is in the front while the hind leg, think of behind, hind leg is in the back. So the four leg, the front leg, is very short. Now we're gonna look at the foreleg, the front leg, and you can clearly see there are only four digits, four little toes or fingers of this frog. Now, to identify if this is a male or female, we're gonna look at the thumb pad. Now you can see right here, right above my thumb, it has a very large thumb pad. Here's the thumb pad. So this is a male. Now a female will not have this large thumb pad. Okay, only males do. So you can see there are four fingers, four digits, and you can see the large thumb pad. So this is a male. Now we're gonna focus on the frog's eyes. Now frogs have a total of three eyelids, one coming down, one coming up, and then they have a third eyelid called a nictitating membrane. The nictitating membrane is a translucent eyelid. This covers the actual eye, so the frog can still see underwater, and it helps protect the eye from any debris or anything in the water that may scratch or damage the eye. So it allows the frog to see underwater. But what's pretty cool about this eyelid is that it actually comes up. So you can see, I'm putting the probe between the eye and the eyelid, the nictitating membrane, you can still see it. Now, what does the word translucent mean? Translucent and transparent are two different things. If something is transparent, like a window, you can clearly see out of it. But a translucent object, you can see light and vague images, but it's not crystal clear. So images that it sees will not be detailed, but it will still allow it to see some basic images to navigate through the water. So make sure you know the third eyelid, the nictitating membrane. Now the nictitating membrane looks green and looks dark, but that's primarily because of the color behind it of the eye. But if we look at it closer, it's actually more of a clearer, lighter color. Now if I pull down the nictitating membrane, you can see the dark eye of the frog. Now you can see the nictitating membrane, how it's somewhat clear, a little yellow tint to it, but uh, it is not as dark as what it looked like when it was on the frog. Now, as we said, the eyeball is very dark and it's very similar to the fish's eye. It was very soft, but as I remove the inside, this is the lens. I showed you the lens of the fish eye. It's very hard. It can bounce a little bit. Now, if I compare this with the BB, it is pretty much exactly the same size with this bullfrog 
I'm going to lift them both up and show you. You can see the lens is also somewhat translucent, allowing light to pass through. Okay, so it's not completely opaque. The lens is circular. Now we're going to go ahead and move past the eye. We're going to go posterior, and here we have a circular structure. And this circular structure, we've talked about this before. We've talked about this with the grasshopper. And this is the tympanic membrane, or we can say the tympanium commonly known as the eardrum. If I look at the frog, I can clearly see the eardrum on the side. So here's the eye, here's the eardrum. Okay, eye, tympanic membrane. So the tympanic membrane, or the eardrum, is used for hearing. Now we have an ear lobe, an oracle, ear structure, which is kind of like a sonar dish, and then we have an ear canal before it comes to the eardrum. The frog does not have any distinct protection of the eardrum like what we do, so it can actually pick up in here. Now, the last thing we're going to look at with the external anatomy, and you can actually see that there are no scales on the frog. Reptiles have scales, such as snakes, lizards, and birds have scales. Now, birds only have scales on their legs. They do not have scales on their body, which their body is covered with feathers. Now, this is very important for you to know that the amphibian does not have scales. Toads are not as slimy. Toads are a little more dry, but toads do not have scales. Frogs, toads, newts, and salamanders, and Sicilians do not have scales. They have slimy skin, and this is going to be very important. They will stay slimy when they are out of water, so they don't dry out. And this also helps with respiration for breathing, because they have little tiny lungs. Now we're going to take a look at the mouth anatomy, and this is very important. You saw this in a worksheet. I'm going to go ahead and open up the mouth. I'm going to pry it open, and then I'm going to cut the jaw muscles. So I'm going to open here. And then I'm going to cut, and then I'm going to cut this side as well. Cut those muscles and a little bit of the jawbone so that we can, so we cut the muscles and a little bit of the jawbone so that we can actually open up the mouth. And you can see as we open up the mouth, you can see where the tongue is attached. The tongue is attached, oh, he's drooling, sorry. The tongue is attached to the front of the mouth. Now, the frog is going to actually stretch out its tongue now, because the frog is dead, it cannot stretch out the tongue super long, uh, but basically uh, it will treat it like a catapult. It will bring its tongue out and then stretch it, okay, coming from the angle or the point of attachment. And right here you can see there are two little sticky attachments, structures of the tongue, it's somewhat forked, that will hit and land on its prey. Now, frogs are carnivores, and they will eat other things, uh, just like fish. Fish are carnivores. Now, some fish will eat algae, uh, but primarily fish are considered carnivores. Okay, here we have uh, some structures that we're going to look at in the internal mouth. But first thing that you need to know is the tongue is attached to the front of the mouth. We're going to peel back the tongue so that we can actually see the internal structures. The first thing that we're going to see is there are actually two openings. The first one is this large kind of horizontal slit. This actually goes to uh, the stomach. This is actually the opening that goes to the esophagus. I can put my finger down. Okay, and it will lead down to the stomach. Okay, so that's part of the digestive system. So that structure, you can see that little sphincter there. Okay, all the muscles. I'm going to, sorry tongue, I'm going to have to move you. Okay, I'm going to cut off the little tongue here. Bye-bye. Okay, so that we can actually see. Here's the esophagus, 
But then we have another structure here. You can't really see it until I opened up using the probe. It's like this vertical slit. This vertical slit is actually the glottis. This leads to the lungs, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So this is the esophagus, this horizontal slit, but the vertical slit is the glottis for breathing. So the horizontal one goes to the stomach, that's part of the digestive system, part of the alimentary canal, food passes through it. The vertical slit is for breathing. Now back here, we have two openings. These are the eustachian tubes, and this actually connects to the ear. This connects to the eardrum, the tympanic membrane. So these structures are actually found in our body as well. The eustachian tube connects our mouth or throat area with our ear. Now, if you ever went in an airplane and you kind of hear uh, your ears pop, that's actually air bubbles in the eustachian tube. When we get an ear infection many times, our eustachian tubes will swell and that will actually uh, cause a lot of pain. Okay, so the eustachian tube connects the mouth throat area with the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. So if I put the probe all the way in here, it'll attach and touch and go through the tympanic membrane. So you can actually see I pushed it through right to the tympanic membrane. Okay, let's go back to the glottis. So this slit is the glottis, and it's G-L-O-T-T-I-S. Okay, this vertical slit, and this opens to the lungs for breathing and vocalization. Now we're gonna take a look at the sets of teeth. Now, there's really no teeth at the mandible. Remember, the lower jaw is the mandible. You will need to know that. So if I ask what part of the mouth is the tongue attached to, or was attached to, it would be the mandible, the movable lower jaw. But we're going to focus on the maxilla. And I'm going to, I'm going to remove the mandible. So we can see the mouth parts. Okay, now the first of the two sets of teeth on the maxilla are going to be the maxillary teeth. Remember, this is the maxilla, the top jaw, okay? So what type of teeth are these? These are the maxillary teeth. Now these teeth are in this little tiny groove right here. The teeth in this little tiny groove are called the maxillary teeth. Now, if I run my finger across them, I feel all these little tiny bumps. It doesn't hurt, it's not sharp, but I feel these little tiny bumps. Now, let's see if you can hear it. I'm gonna try and be as quiet as possible. I'm gonna run the probe along here, so you may wanna turn up your volume. So you can actually hear the little ridges of the maxillary teeth, okay? Now here we have two bumps. We have two bumps and then on the outside we have two holes. Now these two holes are the internal nears. Now we have external nears, which are the nostrils, and we have internal nears. But we're not gonna focus on the nears right now, we're gonna focus on these two bumps. Now these two bumps are called the vomerin teeth. Now these vomerin teeth, those two bumps right there, they don't really impale the fly or the prey, but they do help hold them in position, kind of clamping down. Now if you would feel it, I know you can't feel it in the video, but, uh, they're very distinct and they stick out like little teeth. I don't know if you can see how they're sticking out, okay? So those are the vomerin teeth. So you are responsible to know both sets of teeth. 
Now these teeth are not necessarily for chewing, but they do help hold the prey as the frog is going to swallow the prey whole. Now we're gonna end with the mouth with the nostrils, the nares, we have the two internal nares, and then we have the external nares on the outside. Now we're gonna go ahead and start with the internal anatomy of the bullfrog. We're gonna take this frog, which is dorsal side up, and turn him ventral side up. Remember, ventral means belly side. Now there are different ways in which we can uh, dissect and start with the frog. One of the things that we're gonna actually do is create a little opening or door. And we don't wanna to cut too deep because we don't wanna cut through the muscles. But first, we're just gonna cut through the skin. And I'm gonna cut through the skin and you can see I am not cutting through the muscle, okay? Uh, the muscle's still there. He has his little six pack. I'm gonna cut through just the skin. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Now I'm creating little doors on either side of the legs. And then I'm going to cut through this muscle. No, I'm sorry. Then I'm gonna cut through the skin and as I peel back the skin, I'm gonna create little doors. Now, many times they will ask you to go ahead and pin the skin. I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna cut it off. You can see right here, you can see all the blood vessels underneath the skin, providing nutrients to the outer epidermis. Now, something that you can clearly see is that there is no fat. This little guy has his nice little six pack. He's been working out, but there's no fat between the muscle and the skin. With humans, we have a lot of fat that actually will be around organs, but a lot of the skin, if someone has a, a large belly, basically that large belly is due to the fat that builds up between the muscle and the skin. And so when that belly gets larger and larger and larger, okay, in the human, basically it's just a increase of fat storage in the cells between the muscle and the skin. Now the frog does not have that, but we'll see how the frog stores its stored energy and fat a different way. Now we're going to go ahead and now we're going to cut open the muscle the same way we cut open the skin. We're going to uh, cut up and we're actually gonna get about right here and we're gonna to have to go through the chest cavity so you're gonna hear some crunching. Then I'm gonna make two little doors and I'm gonna open up the muscles. But first I'm going to cut the little flaps off of the skin and I'm going to start near the cloaca or the cloaca. Now I don't wanna cut, if I dig down real deep it's going to rip through all the organs and I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna try and go as superficial as possible, cutting through the muscle. I don't wanna cut through the organs and damage those as we wanna look at those. Then now I'm gonna cut through the chest cavity. Okay, a big snap there. Now remember, I'm not gonna see eggs in this frog because it's a male and we saw that through the thumb pad. I'm gonna open this up here. Then I'm going to create my little door. So now we're gonna look at the internal anatomy of the frog. And I removed the legs and flaps so it gives us a better view. Now the first thing that we see are some large organs here and some side organs here. Now. We're gonna go step by step and look at them individually and talk about their functions. But first, let's take a look at these. These three dark lobes are actually called the liver. So the liver is actually going to be the most ventral and the liver is going to actually cover majority of the body. Now, right up here, between the liver covered in a tissue, this is the heart, this lighter colored little triangle. This is the heart and the heart is going to have a total of three lobes and you can see the tissue that's surrounding the heart, this visceral tissue. Our heart also has a covering like that. Now 
What you can't see are the lungs. Now, most dorsal are going to be the lungs, and, we're, and we will take a look at the lungs. The lungs are very squishy. We'll take a look at those in a little bit later. But let's first take a look at the heart. And I'm gonna remove the liver. I'm gonna remove the lobes of the liver. So there are three lobes. Now I'm gonna remove the heart and you can see the heart right here. It actually looks like a little acorn. Now the heart has a little triangle shape. It has two atria. Now the atria are at the top while it has one ventricle. Ventricle is at the bottom. This bulk of this muscle is the ventricle. Now for humans, birds, and mammals, we're gonna have two atria and two ventricles. Amphibians only have three chambers, we have four chambers. So the frog is gonna have a left and right atria. That's gonna be this darker portion, these darker chambers, parts of the heart. Atria, A T R. I A, so it has a left and right atria, A T R I A, at the top, and a single ventricle, V E N T R I C L E, ventricle, in which blood will pass through in the heart. Now let's take a look at where the lungs are. Now, because I removed the heart and the liver, I can actually see the lungs, and the lungs are very squishy and kind of stretchy. So the lungs are located behind the heart and the liver. Originally, we could not see the lungs because they're more dorsal. And I'm going to remove them now. Now these two are part of the respiratory system. These are two respiratory organs. There's one, it looks like a little raisin. And here's the second. They're the respiratory organs, they're very squishy. Now let's take a look at the liver, which are the three lobes. Uh, they, maybe from a distance, they're very dark. They look kind of like the lungs, but they're not. The lungs are very squishy, but these are not very squishy. Uh, they can easily break, as you can see here, as it's starting to break. There's lots of holes inside the liver. Now the liver is part of the digestive system, and you can see it's kind of peeling the liver is part of the digestive system. The liver actually makes a substance called bile, and bile breaks down fat. And remember, fat is actually known as a lipid. So bile breaks down lipids. The liver will also detoxify any chemicals such as alcohol. So this is the liver. So you can actually have liver damage if you drink too much alcohol, or if you take in too much fat, the liver becomes very fatty as it's trying to break that down. So the liver has three lobes or three parts. Now, something that's very important is the liver, even though it's part of the digestive system, is not part of the alimentary canal. Food does not pass through it. Now, food goes in the mouth, down the esophagus, and it will actually go to the next thing we're gonna talk about, which is the stomach. So here's the stomach. Okay, food will not go through the liver. The liver will actually be connected to the small intestine and help actually digest fat. Now there's a little tiny structure underneath the liver. This little tiny guy is called the gallbladder and we'll take a look at him. But before we look at the gallbladder, which is a little green little sac, let's take a look at the fat bodies. If I peel this back and I remove these, there's no fat around the intestines, and we also said there's no fat between the muscle and the skin. But what we have are these yellow or even bright orange spaghetti-shaped fingers. Okay, this one's a little brighter, a little darker. Okay, so those are the fat bodies. Okay, before we get to the stomach, let's go back to the gallbladder. The gallbladder also produces bile. This little sac is underneath the liver. And if I remove this little sac, 
it's gonna squirt out and get all in my mouth. Gross. Let's go ahead and cut it. Okay, so you can actually see uh, right towards the upper area here, that's the gallbladder, this little sac. And you can see it's kind of empty because I accidentally squirted it all out and it went all over my face and in my mouth, yummy, yummy. So this small little balloon or circular shaped sac, it's like a little balloon, stores bile. Now let's take a look at the stomach. You can see how large the stomach is here. And so the esophagus is gonna come down and you're gonna actually have, okay, this little pouch here at the beginning. And we're gonna cut open the stomach. Uh, I'm going to, I'm not gonna remove it fully because we wanna look at the alimentary canal, but I'm gonna cut it away from the esophagus. And as I do that, you can actually see this transparent tissue that's kind of holding it together, this kind of translucent tissue that's kind of holding these organs together. I'm gonna to cut through some of that, and that's actually called the mesentery. That holds the organs in place, and that actually shows design here that if you're running or you're moving around, you don't want these organs uh, wrapping around and getting tied in a knot. So if I open this up, you can see the mesentery. See how it's kind of translucent? You can have light pass through it, but you can't actually see the actual image. You can see there's something there. So the mesentery is translucent, just like the nictitating membrane, nictitating membrane, but they have different functions. I'm gonna cut a little bit of the mesentery and open this up a little bit. And as I'm doing this, you can also see this structure, this kind of red structure. This is the spleen. I'm gonna remove the spleen. It's another circular structure. And if I cut it in half, okay, you can see the stuff inside it. Okay, uh, but we're gonna focus on the alimentary canal. And as I stretch this open, okay, breaking the mesentery, you can actually see the small intestine. And down here, you have the large intestine. So let's take a look at this. This is part of the alimentary canal. Uh, we know we have the mouth esophagus. Esophagus connects here where my finger's moving up and down. Here's the stomach. Here's the stomach along here. Then it moves into the small intestine. So here we have the long small intestine. The small intestine is very long. Okay, if the frog wanted to take his little organs out, he can do a little jump rope. Okay, and then right here at the very bottom, so from my thumb where the small intestine ends, okay, to the cloaca, we have the large intestine. The large intestine is very big, it's thicker, but it's very short, okay? So the small intestine is the largest, I'm sorry, the small intestine is the longest organ, okay? Now our skin is the largest, covering our body, but the small intestine is longer than the large intestine. Now I'm going to cut at the bottom of the large intestine and remove that, and this is the alimentary canal, excluding the esophagus. So this is where food passes through. Remember, it does not pass through the liver. Food passes through the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and now the cloaca. Now remember, I'm not saying anus. <coughs> now remember, I'm not saying anus. In humans, the digestive system will end with the anus, but remember, not just the digestive system empties out into the, into the cloaca, not just the digestive system empties out into the cloaca, but also the urinary system and the reproductive system empties out into the cloaca. So we have one hole, while with humans, we're gonna have multiple 
openings and holes. Now let's take a look at the stomach. As you can see, it specifically curves. The stomach specifically is going to digest proteins. I'm gonna cut open the stomach so you can see the internal structure of the stomach. See if there's any food inside. Now you can see these lines, these folds inside the stomach. These folds are actually called ruga. And you can actually see right here what the frog was eating. Looks like, well, it looks like a little insect. This little guy must've been eating, looks like an earwig. And I don't know if you can see the little pincher structures at the end of the earwig. Let me set it down, maybe you can see that. Now we're gonna move away from the esophagus, stomach, and now we're gonna move into the small intestine. Okay, the small intestine leads from the stomach, and you can see it's very long. Now the first straight portion of the small intestine, you can see right here, okay, that first straight portion, is actually called the duodenum. And then the curled area is called the ileum. Now, there are actually three names of, now there are actually three parts of the small intestine, but I'm only giving you two. And we did say that the ileum would be held together by that. Now we did say that ileum and other organs in the intestines would be held together by the mesentery, M E S. E-N-T-A-R-Y, the mesentery. Now we're gonna to go to the large intestine and hopefully you can see this, but I'm going to show you if I squeeze the large intestine, okay, we're gonna have some feces coming out. Okay, it's pooping, okay. So you can see it's all kind of broken down, big thing of poop, I'll set him here. And then there's a lot of, I can actually feel a lot of exoskeleton, a lot of structure as I squeeze out the feces, okay, from eating lots of insects. So it can't digest the exoskeletons. Sometimes you're, you're gonna have maybe even bones that can't be digested. Okay, so I can see some wings from a shell of a beetle. Okay, this is actually the outer wing, the protective wing. Actually, I can remove, these are the kidneys. They look like little pecans, little walnut structures. Now, as I remove the kidneys, you can actually see the vertebrae, the backbone. Now, you cannot see the nerve cord, because the nerve cord is protected by the backbone, but you can see each little vertebrae making up the vertebral column, the backbone. And you can also see the little ribs here. Okay, and there's our frog. Now I went ahead and opened up another frog, and what we have are the eggs and the ovaries. You can see the ovary structures here. So this is part of a female. And then here we have the eggs. This is the egg mass, and the eggs are all inside together. And these are unfertilized eggs because the frogs are oviparous. The frogs are gonna lay eggs, and then the male is gonna swim over and spawn. If you ever heard of spawning before, spawning means releasing sperm over the eggs. Then, basically, in the water, the sperm enters the eggs, and then they become fertilized. So you can see some of the eggs. Okay, so this is the egg mass. 